Hello, I'm back at my parents' house today where I installed a heat pump six months ago in October last year. It's now, we're now well into May and it's lovely and warm. It's safe to say the heating season is over. So let's go and see how the heat pump's been, been performing and how my parents have found living with it for a full heating season. Am I going to be allowed back in the house? <laughs> so let's have a quick recap. So this is a 1980s bungalow. It's 116 meters squared and I estimated the heat loss to be about 4.8 kilowatts. The existing heating system in the house, um, it was storage heaters and a solid fuel wood burning stove with a back boiler. And there was a wet um, unpressurized pumped uh, radiator system fed from the back boiler. So this is the heat pump behind me here. Um, I fitted a five kilowatt Valent Aerotherm Plus heat pump. And this has turned out to be an excellent choice. I've been very impressed with the Valent heat pump. And this is all the, the outdoor pipe work here is all nicely insulated with Primary Pro. And then it goes up and through the wall there. So this is what the airing cupboard looks like now. My dad's done a really nice job uh, putting some shelves around the heat pump cylinder. I was rather jokingly calling it the plant cupboard when I was installing the heat pump but now it's gone, definitely gone back to being an airing cupboard again. So just to quickly recap here in the living room, this is where the primary pipe work come through the heat pump. You can see them running around behind the stove there. And then it goes behind that paneling and then through the wall here into, into the airing cupboard. And we also ran some new pipe work, two 15 millimeter flow and return to feed these two new radiators that we fitted there behind, behind the sofa. And instead of fitting one super long radiator or a triple panel one, just I just went for fitting two um, 1.2 meter by 600 radiators, so which is a very cost effective way to get a lot of radiator area. Here on the other side of the living room, here's a radiator we upgraded to a double panel one. So even though we did upgrade quite a few radiators, the process was pretty quick and straightforward. Um, just take the old radiator off, um, stub out the uh, the pipework and then fit the, a new double panel radiator and this is con this is connected into the existing pipework that runs in ducts in the solid floor below us here in the kitchen this is one of the radiators we didn't upgrade this is the um, I think 30 35 year old radiator that my dad put in when he built the house um, the heat demand in the kitchen is not particularly high fantastic we're absolutely thrilled to bits with it we haven't got any worries about lighting the fire first thing in the morning or when we've been out and we come back and needing to get the stove going. It's constant all the time. Should I tell you two, two negatives? I've got it withdrawal symptoms because we virtually... I never have to light the wood stove. <laughs> yeah, re really enjoyed, we've done that for you could do quite it. a few days. You decades. could do it, do it at Christmas. Special treat. <laughs> Special treat to light the wood stove. But shall I tell you a second negative? It's much harder to tell since we have the air source heat pump installed. What the outside outdoor temperature, temperature is. I thought you'd say that. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's really, really very different from. I mean, previously we had the wood stove. And uh, we had the overnight storage heaters. So you had, you know, the, the temperature tended to fluctuate in the house. The, the temperature somehow had to catch up, you know, after a really cold day, a cold night. You'd, I'd light the stove just to back up the temperature that we, we got mm. from, from, from the storage heaters. Mm. Whereas now you're coming in the morning and uh, I know you're our son, but you're going you're gonna to have to believe this. <laughs> and the room's just sort of warm, around about 21.5. Yeah, yeah. And you think, oh, it's, you know, quite a warm day. You go outside mm. and it's frosty. <laughs> I know we haven't had a lot you of frosty. You can not, not wearing enough clothes. <laughs> and you hat and gloves. So let's have a look at the data from the system. So this system is on Heat Pump Monitor, which is a community initiative to share and compare real-world heat pump performance data. 
Um, the system is monitored with a billing grade mid approved heat meter and um, electricity meter. So if we go and heat the monitor here and then select last 365 days, here is the system here. Um, it's this valent Aerotherm plus five kilowatt in Beth Gellert Gwynedd. So over the past year, well, about 300 days, so nearly nearly a full year of data, um, it's uh, averaged a SCOP of 4.4, .4, which is actually exactly the same as as, uh, as my system over the past over the past year. This makes it the ninth out of the 60 systems that have a year's worth of data on heatputmonitor.org. So that's that's a fantastic result. Um, really, really happy with that. So what does that SCOP figure mean? Well, let's take a look in a bit more detail. So if we open up the system here, we can see the total electrical input and the total heat output over, over the year. And we can also have a look at how the COP varies month to month. You can see it's mostly been averaging about 4.4 4 .4 most months. Uh, January was the coldest month. You can see that averaged the lowest COP of 3.97. And also the summer, the summer months get a low COP because it's not doing any um, space heating. It's only doing hot water. So let's have a look at the heat, the heat delivered each month. Unsurprisingly, January was the coldest month, so it has the highest heat delivered. And just to prove that the heat pump did heat the house, here is the, the room temperature. So you can see the room temperature stayed rock solid at an average of 21 degrees. So let's talk about how much this system costs to run. So initially, I'm just going to compare the heat pump to exactly how much my parents were paying for the storage heaters. But based on the uh, current rates last year for Economy 7 that my parents were paying for the storage heaters back in October uh, 2023, they are paying uh, 1700 um, pounds per year for the storage heaters. Where the heat pump, even though it put in significantly more heat, and the reason for that is the storage heaters were only really providing background background heat in the house. Um, there was also a wood burn stove that contributed significantly to the heat, and also the storage heaters were not heating hot water. The running costs for the heat pump were four hundred and forty pounds for the uh, actual oct octopus agile rates on a half hourly um, basis that the heat pump used on heat pump monitor. If we go to the cost section and turn on the Octopus Agile tariff, you can see there that the, this, this system used 440 pounds of electricity on Octopus Agile for the year, and the cost of heat delivered was 4.1 pence. So that's a massive saving of 1,300 pounds a year. So now let's do a direct comparison based on today's tariff. So let's assume that the storage heaters are um, on the current economy seven rates and the heat pump is on the current price cap um, so you can see here the heat pump saved 630 pounds compared to uh, storage heaters plenty of hot water washing up showers well look no, let, let's no face work. it in the past <clears throat> we we didn't have uh, a ready supply of hot water mm. in the winter the wood stove actually did provide hot water in the tank. So in the, the coldest of weather, we generally had hot water. But that was a relatively short period of the year. So most of the time, if the wood stove wasn't on or not on sufficiently you know, high enough mm. to, to heat the water, we didn't have a ready supply of hot water. That would boil the kettle or, of course, use the, the immersion mm. heater. Electric shower. Yeah. So Electric most of the time we, we generally had cold water because it didn't really matter unless we specifically needed hot water. Now? Now? It's, <laughs> it's hot in the tap just, all the time. We've yeah. just got yeah. hot water so I've taken to having the occasional shower in the morning. I estimated the heat loss to be about 4.8 kilowatts and crit critically I assume the air change rate for that heat loss calculation to be um, 0.35 air changes per hour um, and I came to that figure by measuring the air changes with a door blower test 
the default assumptions would have assumed uh, air change rates of uh, one or, or above, um, even as high as um, you know two or three in the in, in the toilets and bathrooms for a uh, pre two thousand property. Um, that would have resulted um, in a much greater heat loss uh, figure. So let's have a look at this heat demand, this new heat demand tool on Heat Monitor. So each one of these blue dots here is one one day's worth of heating. And if I hold my arrow over a blue dot, you can see on that particular day, that was the 6th of February, the heat pump um, output to two kilowatts to maintain a room temperature of 21 degrees when it was eight degrees outside. Uh, and if we have a look up towards the right hand side here, this will be the coldest day. The coldest day the heat pump experienced, um, there was an average um, outdoor temperature of minus one degrees and heat pump needed three kilowatts of average heat on that day to maintain 21.7 degrees in the living room. So if we extrapolate that out, we haven't yet had a design um, day. We haven't yet experienced minus three for a 24 hour period. Um, but if, if we did, we would expect um, about four kilowatts of heat to be required. BS be required, you know, if this line of best fit continues. And the, tr the trend does kind of look like, it. you know, we've had quite a few cold days now um, to provide this, this data. Just to summarize these heat loss figures. So if we use the default um, SIBC air changes for a pre-2000 property, we come out with a heat loss um, of around 8.5 kilowatts. Now, after doing the door blower test, um, uh, it gave me the confidence to use a lower air change figure of 0.35. That came out with a heat loss of 4.8 kilowatts. And that's what I used for sizing um, this heat pump. Now it turns out um, that I was definitely correct to use those lower air change uh, rates because the actual measured heat loss based on the heat input is between 3.5 to 4 kilowatts. Um, so you can see if we'd have gone with, uh, you know, an 8.5 or even a, you know, nine or a 10 kilowatt heat pump, that would be significantly oversized for the property. Um, as it stands, we've got a five kilowatt heat pump that can output a little bit more than five kilowatts if needed. That's probably quite a good, um, quite a good size for this property. I'm not suggesting we should go, you know, as low as, you, you, you don't want the heat pump to be exactly sized to the heat requirement. That doesn't leave any any headroom for reheating or anything like that. Being maybe 20 to 30 percent oversized is, is not a bad place to be. I think this is um, an important consideration, especially for all the properties. The air change rate that the installer uses when doing the heat loss calculation can have a very significant um, effect on the um, the heat loss value. This is very I, you know, quiet. I mean, it just, mm. is, yeah. We're not aware. There's, there's no noise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's as simple as that. And mm -hmm. um, anyone listening may think we're, we're over egging it. <laughs> but occasionally, in the coldest of weather, uh, if we're in the bathroom, which is right adjacent to where the heat pump is, the other side of that wall, you think, okay, the heat pump kicked in. Fantastic! <laughs> it's it's doing the job. And it's... also occasionally when it's hitting hitting the water, if it's mm. really very, very quiet. That's when it'll be working hardest. Um, basically, we... It's not noisy at all. So let's have a look at the coldest day of the year. This is always interesting for a heat pump. So the coldest day from the last, last heating season was on the 1st of December. And on this day, it went down to minus 3.3 outside, which is just below the minus three design temperature of this heat pump. But it's very rare to have that really cold temperature for a full you know, 24 hour period. The average temperature over the day was minus one. And the heat pump managed to heat the house just fine. It was actually 21.7 degrees average temperature in there and uh, it did that with a fl an average flow temperature of 35 degrees and an average heat output of just over three three kilowatts so the heat pump was only really ticking ticking over 
um, it could have outputted a lot more heat, um, you know, if was if that was needed. Um, you can see the heat pump, even when it's minus, you know, minus two and a half, minus three outside, it's still only putting in about 800 watts of, of electricity, which is, you know, not much really. Um, so these little spikes here, they're defrost cycles. So the heat pump's defrosting every hour, hour or so overnight, which is, which is totally normal. Um, it doesn't take that long to recover, recover from the defrost. And then we're back to delivering, you know, 35 degree, um, flow temperature. So the COP on this day was three, um, and the heat pump used 23 kilowatt hours of electric to deliver 74 kilowatt hours of heat. Um, just out of interest, let's just, just zoom in on one of these defrost cycles and we'll turn on um, show cooling. So when the heat pump defrosts, that's getting rid of the frost uh, and ice that builds up on the, the heat fins um, on, on the outside of the heat pump. So you can see it takes a little bit of heat from the house, um, only for about five minutes or so, um, just to melt the ice. And then once the ice is melted, it then goes back into heating and recovers to deliver delivering heat heat again. You know, it might look quite drastic, you know, losing 5.6 kilo, kilowatts of heat. But if we zoom in on that section, the amount of heat actually being lost is very small, only 0.2 kilowatt hours. And, and this system is fully open loop, just without a volumizer. Um, it's only got about 100, uh, about 100 liters of water or so in the system. Um, but even with that, amount of system volume is perfectly adequate to get through defrosts no no problem so let's that's that's the coldest day of the year let's have a look at a more typical day so let's choose a day maybe middle of december like on this day the heat pump averaged a cfp of five even with this big hot water cycle that happened um and the on this day, the outside temperature was just 10 and a half degrees C, and the room temperature averaged 20.8 degrees. So yeah, nice and toasty inside the house. And the average out heat output was 1.9 kilowatts. That's even with the hot water. If we just exclude the hot water for a second, we can see the average heat output here was only actually 1.7 kilowatts. So this is lower than the, the minimum modulation output of the heat pump which we can see here is about 2.3, 2.2 kilowatts. So the heat pump has to cycle, um, but Valen's got quite a good um, algorithm, degree minute algorithm to avoid excess cycling. You can see these cycles are you know, quite long. Um, that's about one, one and a quarter hours or so. So decent length cycles, and then the heat pump's off then for about 30, 40 minutes or so in between the cycles. So even though it's look, it looks like it's cycling a lot, a lot, this is not, um, not excess cycling at all. Um, this is a, uh, yeah, heat pump operating. This is not, <clears throat> this, this sort of level of cycling is nothing to worry about. You can see that the temperature was rock solid at 21 degrees. So this is a fairly typical, um, typical day. And the heat pump used six and a half kilowatt hours of electric to deliver 33 um, kilowatt hours of heat. The purple is the outside temperature and these blue dots here are the COP on each of those days. So you can see the COP is very much correlated to the outdoor temperature. The temp outdoor temperature drops, the heat output increases and the COP reduces. But co coming from storage heaters to an air source heat pump, the reduction in grid load is, is phenom phenomenal. So on the left here, we can see the power consumption of a storage heater um, charging up overnight for a typical winter's day, three degrees outside. The storage heater draws a peak of 12 kilowatts for a couple of hours during the night to charge up, uh, where over the time period, um, the air source heat pump draws 600 watts or 0.6 kilowatts um, on the same outside temperature. So the air source heat pump has got a 20 times lower peak grid load. That's well, I'll, I'll tell, you, um, tell you what, Blair, um, you know, we know people have had air source heat pumps installed and 
generally people seem to be fairly happy but there are people who've had problems uh, particularly who've had them installed some some years ago and we've been on a learning curve hello little laddie hello. Are, you, are you learning oh, yes. about air <laughs> 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 you'll, you'll, you'll be past the kind of my chocolate i've not eaten it yet we, we've been oh, on a little, learning little, curve little, little, little. Yeah. to uh, le learn about these air source heat pumps and I know you're our son, but we've got to give you credit for showing us, uh, you know, how really to install it. And to anyone listening, I think it's really, really important that you get three things. You must have someone who is prepared to do a good survey. Mm, yeah. you, you've got yeah. to get a good survey of the property to find out all the variables that you, you can probably go through in a technical way. Secondly, you've got to have the plan drawn up and we were lucky because we were involved, we could see that you, you, were, you were making the plan and explaining it to us. And the third thing, which is pretty obvious, you've got to have someone who's reliable and is going to go a, do a good you know, practical job. And maybe you can tag on to that third thing, maybe a fourth thing in brackets, that the competent person who installs it has got to be available in the following weeks and months just to check everything's okay. And in our case, what, what little teeny wrinkles, I think we, we had a slight increase in, in um, the hot water cycle. Did, did we have mm -hmm. that? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that initial tweaking after the system is first put in is quite important just to get the co weather compensation curve set and, you know, any uh, little little tweaks to... It really is an eye opener. It, I think it's living with this air source heat pump is something you have to experience to appreciate. 